Hi guys, so today I wanted to do the mid-year book freak out tag, which for some reason the majority of booktube has already filmed, but it's only 30th of June today, so technically half year point is now, and <laughs> I'm gonna go by this timeline and say I am on time and everyone else is way too early. <laughs> There are 14 prompts in this tag, so I'm gonna try to choose a unique book for each one, and I'm gonna try to give you really quick descriptions of what each book is about. But yeah, without any further ado, let's go ahead and start with the first prompt. So the first prompt is the best book you've read so far in 2020, and for this one I chose The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. So The Cruel Prince I actually read at the beginning of the year, and I've read a couple of other books that I've given 5 stars or 4.5 stars, but this specific book and the series as a whole has gone down into my all-time favorite series. Even though going into it, I thought I was gonna hate it. It just sounded really like not something I will like, but because everyone was talking about it, I wanted to see what the hype was about, so I decided to check it out and I flew through the entire trilogy. I don't know which book out of the series is my favorite, but I'm just gonna put a series as a whole as my favorite, so the Folk of the Air series. So basically, to give you a quick synopsis, this book follows three sisters, specifically our protagonist Jude, who is one of the twin sisters, and at the beginning of the book they are abducted from their home in our real world into the world of Fae. The book basically follows her story as she kind of grows up in this world of fae and um, the cruelty that she endures and it's kind of like this is a book basically about prejudice and kind of Jude trying to find her place in the world and fighting for her right to be respected and regarded as equal to the fae who always look down upon humans. There is much more to that, it's a very magical, fantastical uh, trilogy, it's very quick, very entertaining, and I enjoyed it so much, would highly recommend. So the next prompt is best sequel you've read so far this year. And for this one I could choose The Wicked King or The Queen of Nothing by Holly Black, but because I'm trying to choose different books for each prompt, I'm gonna say The Hand on the Wall by Maureen Johnson, which is the third and final book in the Truly Devious trilogy. I really enjoyed this trilogy, it's one of my favorite series of all time, even though I do believe that all the books could have easily been condensed into one bigger book, but as a whole, because this book was the conclusion and it didn't have the stupid cliffhangers that the previous two books had in the series, I really enjoyed it, I was happy to see everything wrap up, and it was a very entertaining book. So to give you a quick synopsis, the Truly Devious, the first book follows Stevie, who's basically a girl who is very very interested in true crime, and she gets accepted into this academy for kids who have very specific interests in a certain area. For example, you can be interested in film or in art or in programming. And the school is basically trying to encourage the students to pursue their passion and all of their studies is centered around that. So when Stevie comes to school, because she's interested in true crime, she decides to investigate the disappearance mystery that... Uh, took place many years ago when the Ellingham Academy, which is the name of the academy, was established. So the wife and daughter of Mr. Ellingham, I don't remember his name now, but they disappeared many, many years ago. And there was also a student in the academy at around the same time who was found dead, and so she's trying to investigate what happened to the student and what happened to the wife and daughter of the school founder, and that's kind of her project, but then things that are happening in current times start mirroring the events of the past, and we do follow the dual timeline of what was happening in the past, and Stevie's journey now how, as she is trying to uncover this mystery, and yeah, it's very interesting, you don't need to know much more than that, it has a very fun cast of characters, and I really really enjoyed this series, I do wish it was one book, but I definitely want to reread at some point, and yeah, it's really fun, but highly recommend. So the next prompt is, what is a new release that you have not read yet, but want to? So this is the books that have been already released this year. So one of the books that I'm really excited to read is The City We Became by N.K. Jemisin, and this book is basically about New York kind of coming to life and the different districts of New York being represented as people, and that's all I really know, it's fantastical, it's uh, adult urban fantasy and about New York City and 
kind of humanizing it so very interesting concept i'm gonna be reading it for a book club another book that i'm really interested in picking up is a song of riffs and ruin by roseanne a brown all i know is that it's a why fantasy hate to love i think it's kind of like an interesting fantasy premise where they're trying to kill each other but they don't know that they're trying to kill each other so yeah, that's all I really know, but it sounds exciting. And also The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins, which I'm planning to pick up next month. And this is a prequel to the Hunger Games trilogy following President Snow. So the next prompt is most anticipated release for the second half of 2020. So starting tomorrow onwards. So hands down, the book that I'm most excited to come out this year is The Invisible Life of Eddie LaRue by Victoria Schwab or V. Schwab. This is her new adult book. I don't know if it's gonna be a series or not, but basically it follows a French girl who falls in love with the devil and their love story over 300 years. That's all I know. That's all I need to know. V. Schwab can write about anything and I will pick it up and read it happily. So that's the book that I'm most looking forward to. And another book that I'm really looking forward to is The Serpent's Curse uh, by Lisa Maxwell, which is the third and I believe final book in the Last Magician series. And yeah, the second book left off on a cliffhanger, so I'm really interested to see what happens. And this is basically a book about people who have special abilities and our main character can travel tr through time and she goes back in time and kind of the butterfly effect changes everything and she is uncovering different secrets and people are betraying each other and there's a lot of things going on, secret societies, whatnot. So if you're interested in a time travel, why fantasy with a rich cast of characters with special abilities, would highly recommend that one. And one more book that I'm really interested in picking up uh, that is releasing, I believe, in August is The Faithless Hawk by Margaret Owen, which I believe is a conclusion to the Merciful Crow duology. I read The Merciful Crow a couple months ago and it was one of my favorite books this year and this is a YA fantasy. I would say it's in between YA and adult fantasy, it kind of feels a little bit more adult, but basically there is a caste system based on birds and each caste has its own special abilities and there are also witches who have like enhanced abilities based on their caste. So there's like sparrows and swans and uh, crows, which are the lowest caste. Our main character is a crow and we follow her journey as she finds herself in a very precarious situation. So looking forward to seeing the conclusion to this duology. I really like the characters and I really want to see more of this world. The world building is really great. I really love the magic system. Amazing, amazing magic system. I could picture everything in my head. If you're looking for a YA fantasy that doesn't read too too young, definitely would recommend that one and for the magic unique magic system. Very good. So the next prompt is biggest disappointment of 2020 and I have two answers for this one. One is not going to be really shocking or really special but the other one I think is a very unpopular opinion. So let's start with the one that people aren't going to hate me for. So the first book I wanted to mention for this one is The Crucible by Arthur Miller which is a play about the Salem witch hunts. I really loved this play when I read it back in high school but I decided to reread it at the beginning of this year and this was actually the first book or play I guess that I read this year and I still liked it but I didn't enjoy it as much and I just feel like I tainted my memory of this play because this time around I just didn't love it as much as I used to. But the second book is a new release that just came out in June and I just listened to an audiobook and everyone's been raving about and this is you Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson. So I didn't hate this book by any means. I actually really enjoyed it. I gave it, I think, like 3.5 stars. But I think there was so much hype built up around this book and it was just positioned as such a fun, why contemporary, uh, sapphic romance. And it was that, but it read too, too young for me. And I already don't enjoy contemporaries as much as it is. So this book just didn't do much for me. It was very dramatic. Like I definitely got Riverdale vibes from it, but not the dark part, just kind of the drama part, how everything is blown out of proportion. Everyone was so obsessed with prom and it was this big thing. And I think our main character did address that it was ridiculous, but it was so ridiculous. And the adults in this book were ridiculous. Like this teacher who was pretending to be French, I was like, 
I cannot imagine anyone acting like that. Like, how can you just have a fake French accent and pretend that you're French and everyone just goes with it? Like, that's so weird. I don't know. I just thought this book was kind of ridiculous. Maybe it was meant to be that way, but I definitely think it's uh, for a much younger audience. I guess this book is probably more suited for people who are like 15 or 16 and for people who care about prom because I didn't even go for my prom or graduation. I didn't care about high school. I just wanted to be done with it. So yeah, I really couldn't relate to anyone. I couldn't relate to people caring about it. And I know that our protagonist cared about it because she wanted the scholarship, which is another thing. Like you've been the queen and king of prom and you get a scholarship. That's just stupid because that's a popularity vote. I don't know. This book... It wasn't bad, I didn't hate it by any means, but I was definitely disappointed because everyone just made it seem like such a fun sapphic romance and I did like the sapphic romance, but it was very middle of the road for me. Please don't hate me, I know basically everyone and their mother loves this book and I don't hate it, as I said, I just, I just was disappointed. I was looking forward to it and it was just meh. So the next prompt is biggest surprise of 2020 and for this one I'm going with Stocking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco. This book was available on Libby a couple months ago and I was just scrolling through what was available to listen to at the time and I saw that this one was available and I've kind of heard about it but I also looked at it. It sounded like it was interested but for some reason I thought it would be bad. Like I went into the book thinking I wouldn't like it and I remember starting reading it and I got so sucked in and I was so surprised as to how much I loved it. I think I gave the first book in the series five stars after I read it and I just enjoyed it so much. I think I was raving about it in my April wrap-up so if you want to see me talk about it more I'll leave the link to the video down below but yeah this book is about basically a young woman in the late 1800s who is an apprentice to her uncle who is a mortician. So she's basically studying to be a mortician but because she's a woman she can't do that so she kind of has to disguise herself. And then these murders start happening where women are being found without with missing internal organs and her uncle being the most notorious doctor mortician in town he is the one who's kind of working on the case and she starts getting involved in it as well and there's also a secondary protagonist in this book who is the love interest and he's really funny and i love him so much so i just really loved their dynamic and kind of how they went about trying to figure out who was the culprit and what was happening and I really enjoyed it and I read the second book already and I do plan on continuing with the series but I was so surprised as to how much I loved this book and would definitely highly recommend it. Our protagonist has very progressive views. Obviously this is a book that was written by an author in our modern age but she wrote a character who basically thinks like a woman would think in the modern age where she believes that women have the same rights and women should be free to choose where they work and what they wear etc etc so there is a lot of commentary about that but yeah i really enjoyed that book was very surprised and the next prompt is your new favorite author whether it be a debut author or an author that is new to you and for this one i chose margaret owen which is the author of the merciless crow i don't know if margaret owen wrote any books before the merciless crow i'm not sure but she was definitely a new author to me and i haven't heard of any of her books before and when I read The Merciless Crow, I was just blown away by her ability to write such a rich, magical system. And it was very unique. And I really enjoyed just in general how it was written. And because I read so much YA fantasy, it does tend to get repetitive. But this book definitely stands out. And it reads a little bit older than most YA fantasy does, to me at least. And I really enjoyed her writing and her ability to develop a magic system in the world. And... Yeah, I'm looking forward to reading more of her books in the future. So the next prompt is your newest fictional crush. And for this one, there is nobody other than Thomas Cresswell from Stalking Jack the Ripper. I live for his banter with Audrey Rose. I really like his attitude and his confidence. And he's really funny. And I really like how he's progressive. I like that he listens to Audrey Rose and... He's kind of adapting his behavior and trying to understand what it's like for women 
in that time and he is so cute i actually don't really have any book crushes ever like fictional crushes i don't really have those but thomas cresswell is definitely one because Every time I read anything about him, I was just swooning. He was so funny and cocky and I loved it. I really, I just, I just really loved his banter with Audrey Rose. Oh my god. So Thomas Cresswell. Thomas Cresswell, man. <laughs> and the next prompt is very similar. It's your newest favorite character. And for this one, I chose Addie from One of Us is Lying. I'm not gonna say much about her, but I'm just gonna say that I really liked her character development throughout the book. I started off really hating her, but by the end of the book, I loved her. She had very human concerns, and considering I could not really relate to her, I wouldn't have expected to like her, because she's kind of like this prom queen, popular girl, and definitely the stereotypical type of character that you wouldn't like. I'm really excited to see where her story goes next, but I'm not gonna say much more because I don't want to spoil the book, but would highly recommend this book in general for character development, specifically for Adi, because she was worth reading the book. So the next prompt is, what book made you cry? And I actually haven't read any book, I don't think this year, that made me cry, but I reread one book that has made me cry on my first read, and that one is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. You probably know what this book is about, so I'm not actually gonna explain what it's about, but I'm just gonna say that this book is very emotional, has a lot of characters that go through many hard things. There's one specific event in this book that made me cry, and if you read this book, you probably know what I'm talking about, but upon reading this book this year, I almost teared up, because I already knew what was going to happen, I didn't actively cry, but I did cry the first time reading this book. It's an emotional ride, I'm not gonna say much more, everyone knows what Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo is about, so let's move on. <laughs> so the next prompt is what book made you happy? And for this one, I'm choosing another reread, and this one is going to be Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. This is a book that I've read six times by now, I believe, and this book is my comfort zone, and this book is definitely the story that I come back to very often. I reread it every year, sometimes multiple times a year. It makes me happy every time because just of everything that happens in it, this book follows Kath, our main character, who is going to college together with her twin sister, but her twin sister doesn't want to room with her, so Kath is kind of forced to make new connections and make new friends, and she has anxiety, I think specifically social anxiety, and this book is a really good anxiety, social anxiety rep, and just mental health rep. I relate to Kath a lot, and this is why I really enjoy reading this book, because Kath basically thinks the way that I think. It always creeps me out how relatable Kath is, especially the first time I read it, I just thought somebody like read my mind and basically put it into a fictional character, but yeah, this book always makes me happy because of how wholesome it is and just the relationships that Kath makes and her whole journey. This book definitely has a lot of dark themes and sad parts as well, but overall it's a very wholesome, happy book. Basically, my mission with this booktube channel is to just make everyone read Fangirl and Six of Crows. So if you haven't read this book, do it. It always makes me happy, evidently. So so the next prompt is, what is the most beautiful book that you've bought so far this year? And for this one, I have a couple. So one of these books is My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. I just love the color scheme and the typography on this book, and I specifically looked for this cover because this is the UK cover, I believe, the one that we have here in Canada, and I think the US is not a bad cover, but it's definitely not like this, and it's also, it's got a braid on the back, and I really love the color scheme. This is very close to my favorite color, and I really love how it's paired with this nice blue. I just really love the color scheme and the type treatment on this one, so yeah, definitely one of the most beautiful ones I got. I also really like The City We Became by N.K. Jemisin. I think this is another really beautiful book. You probably can't see on camera, but there are these little, I don't know what they're called, they're kind of glimmery, uh, shiny parts that are imprinted here, and they're like Kraken hands, not hands, what are they called? They're like these octopus 
tentacles, limbs, you know, whatever they're called. And yeah, they're kind of like hidden throughout the book. There's like some, and I really like how it's just, you know, really bright colors against the overall black and white. And the back, look at how fun and colorful this is. I love this. Just really love the, this whole design. And look at the dust jacket flap. It's beautifully designed. Beautiful. One of Us is Next by Karen and McManus is also really beautiful. Obviously, it's the same cover as the One of Us is Lying, and it's shimmery type, and it has blue sprayed edges. And it's very clean, beautiful typography. Amazing. And I also just got these two in the mail, but they're the graphic um, novel slash just illustrated books by Laia Lopez, Strawberry Moon and Blue Moon. They're actually in Spanish. Laia Lopez is one of my favorite illustrators and these books are beautiful. And like, it's illustrated, it's kind of graphic novel mixed with a regular illustrated novel format. But yeah, she has her illustrations and she's one of my favorite illustrators. So definitely one of the most beautiful beautiful books that I got this year. Okay, and the next prompt is what books do you need to read before the end of the year? And I feel like everyone says this, but all of them. I'm actually going to be filming a book haul right after I film this video, and basically I'm aiming to read all of the books that I bought this year, plus some of the books that I've had on my bookshelf the longest, but one of them is definitely The City We Became by N.K. Jameson. I've showed this book many times throughout this video, and I also really want to get to All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr. I've had this book on my bookshelf for like five years and I remember being really excited when I bought this book, but for some reason I've never picked it up. So I really want to read this one just because it's getting embarrassing how long it's been on my bookshelf. And it's not like I'm not interested in it. I'm still very much interested in it, but I just haven't picked it up. Also the books that I mentioned that are coming out, so The Invisible Life of Eddie LaRue and The Serpent's Curse. And I also want to read Sheets by Brenna Thumler, which is very easy. I want to finally get to Illuminae that they have over here. Many, many books. I just basically want to read as many books on my physical TBR as I can. I've been getting back into reading more books physically because I've been really into audiobooks for the past year and a half so trying to read more books physically now so I'm definitely gonna try to tackle as many books as I can from my physical TBR. And the last prompt is basically mention a favorite book community member. For this one I could name so many people, I have so many booktubers that I recently discovered and that I've been watching for a while as well, that I love, and I'll link links to some of my favorite channels down below, but the one that I specifically wanted to mention is Tiana T. She only has a couple of videos on her channel, and she's a relatively small channel. She has under 5,000 subscribers, which is significantly more than me, but you know, if you haven't seen her videos, go watch them. She is hilarious. She's so funny. I could probably watch every one of her videos over and over many many times just because everything that she says is just so entertaining and she's honestly just very skilled at editing and so very well spoken. Her videos are great and I feel like I'm just gonna be re-watching her videos forever. A couple other creators I also wanted to mention are The Book Leo and Books with Leo, which are two booktubers from the Netherlands that I discovered relatively recently and they're both magical, beautiful girls that I love watching videos of. I think the book Leo, Leoni, she has very unique um, videos, I would say. I really like her format and kind of how she talks about books. I think it's very unconventional for booktube, but I think she's like not following the, you know, regular format of videos that most booktubers do, so I really enjoy her videos for that. Books with Leo is just very sweet. I really love her personality. I'll just put the little screenshots of their channels up when I'm talking about them, so you know which one I mean, but Books with Leo, she's she doesn't take herself too seriously and she's really fun and she has a lovely personality, so I really love watching her videos. And my favorite booktuber of all time, and I think forever and ever, is G from Book Roast. I basically mention her in every single video, but 
If you, for some reason, don't watch G's videos, please do yourself a favor and go and watch her videos because she's amazing and she deserves so, so much more love. And I'm really happy that more people are discovering her channel. I've been following her for years since she had like less than 10,000 subscribers. I think she's, I don't know if she's reaching 100,000 now, but she's definitely getting there, you know, so really happy for her and she definitely deserves it she does so much work she hosts elaborate readathons and yeah she's just a magical person i will leave the links to all of the creators that i just mentioned as well as the links to all of the books that i've mentioned in this video down below so check that out if you're interested but i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope i'm not too too late for this trend even though it's only halfway through the year today but apparently i'm already somehow late so <laughs> but yeah i hope you enjoyed watching this video please stay safe continue supporting the black lives movement and educating yourself and i'll see you in my next one bye